story one. I met this girl on POF, and we dated for a year. She lived just a six-minute walk from me, so we hung out quite often. We were both introverts, so we mainly spent time with each other. We considered our relationship serious and exclusive. From the beginning, I noticed she frequently texted this one guy. I asked her about him, and she said he was her tattoo artist. Out of curiosity, I checked out the website of the tattoo place she went to. Lo and behold, there was a tattoo artist there with the same first name as the guy on her phone, but a different last name. I asked her about it, and she accused me of being paranoid, insisting it was absurd to think she'd lie to me. I agreed. Maybe I was being paranoid. Fast forward about five months into our relationship. I'm on Facebook, and I decide to search for the name of the guy on her phone. I found a profile from her small city with no picture or info. I brought it up with her again because now there are two profiles with the same name, one belonging to an actual tattoo artist and the other matching the name on her phone. She flips out, calling me crazy. I agreed, but wanted a straightforward answer. She reassured me that I had nothing to worry about. We got past it. Around a year into the relationship, I discovered her on POF. I would periodically check to see if she had recreated her profile. We both deleted ours. I found a profile I suspect might be hers, but it has no pictures. I decide to snoop a bit, and it turns out to be her. She was back on POF, looking for guys. I had all the evidence I needed and planned to confront her the next day and break up with her. However, I thought if I was going to end things, I should message the guy on Facebook just out of curiosity. Plot twist. I message the guy and he responds immediately. We chat and it turns out he's her boyfriend. I had been her second boyfriend the entire time. She met him two months before she met me. She was bouncing back and forth between us for a whole year and neither of us had a clue about each other. He once saw my name on her phone and she claimed I was her tattoo artist. Every time I questioned her, it turned out I was right. Every time she disappeared mysteriously at night, she was with him. Every time she said she was hanging out with a friend, she was with him. Turns out she didn't actually have any friends. It was always him. We both dumped her the next morning and met up the following day for a beer. We haven't spoken since. Story 2. I stumbled upon my adoption papers in the family strongbox when I was a freshman in college, even though I'd grown up being told that my parents were my biological parents. As it turns out, my parents had left it there intentionally for me to discover. Among those papers, I found a certificate stating that my dad was my adoptive legal guardian. My mom, on the other hand, was my biological mother. This explained the pictures of her with me at the hospital when I was born and why I never suspected a thing. They had conceived me via a sperm donor. I'd always wondered why I didn't resemble my dad at all, but was a spitting image of my mom. It turned out to be a huge relief for her. She'd worried that the entire family knew about my adoption except me, and the fear of her large, chatty Irish family accidentally spilling the beans was quite significant. I'm honestly surprised they kept the secret. They never planned to tell me, but they decided that for an accurate medical history, I should be aware that I didn't inherit my dad's predisposition to heart disease. When my dad finally shared this with me, he cried, fearing that I might suddenly stop loving him as if my entire childhood had been a lie. I laughed and reassured him that he was still my dad and would always be. This revelation brought us even closer. It also helped me understand various things about my childhood, such as why I looked nothing like him and why I didn't need glasses when both my parents had poor eyesight. I guess those parents were fans of Among Us. At least they planned evidence for something good, like what imposters do. Story 3. I was sure I'd never marry because no one wanted me. Then I met my now wife and realized I'd been listening to old tapes my parents had etched in my head. They did everything they could to strip me and my siblings of every last shred of self-respect. 17 years later, I've been married for 15 years. I've had two children by marriage and three grandchildren. My life is awesome. I went from gonna die alone to the patriarch of my family. Best plot twist ever. Just to clarify, my wife is older than I am and had two grown children when we married. They're now turning 34 and 38. Yes, technically they're my stepchildren, but their bio dad disappeared when I entered the picture and hasn't been seen since, even though he lives about 15 to 20 minutes away. My son calls me dad, and my daughter refers to my wife and me as her parents. So I am dad. I am certainly my granddaughter's papa. I've held each one of them from the day they were born and have been a constant presence in all their lives. I've changed diapers, swiped butts, and read to them. We all live about 10 minutes from each other, and it's a rare two or three days that go by without me seeing at least one of my kids, their spouses, and my grandkids. My wife is 10 years older than I am and had two adult children from her first marriage. My stepson and stepdaughter were already teenagers when we married. Their bio dad has some bad habits and hit the eject button when I came into their lives. I walked my daughter down the aisle when she was married, and my son called me dad. For all intents and purposes, I am their father. And you better believe I'm a grandkid's grandfather. I held every one of them in my arms in the day they were born, and I've changed more diapers and wiped more butts than you can imagine. They don't even know who bio grandpa is. He's literally spent a total of about 10 hours with all three of them. One's almost seven, the other just turned five, and the youngest is three and a half. Ten hours total with the three most amazing girls anyone would have the pleasure to meet. Not that I'm bitter. And I'm a proud father. My wife and I are very proud of the family we've built. With my kids and their spouses and our grandkids, plus us, we call it the nine of us. And you will never meet a tighter circle of love and support. Story 4 in second grade, I received a diagnosis of muscular dystrophy and some serious heart issues, and it seemed like everyone believed I was living on borrowed time. Fast forward eight years and I was still going strong. My doctors had essentially thrown in the towel in diagnosing what was wrong with me. That's when my parents decided to seek a second opinion, and we headed to the Mayo Clinic. 
Tara was quickly diagnosed with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, a condition that, in my case, could be managed through exercise. It's quite the opposite of what my previous doctors had advised. This turn of events left me thinking, now I have to plan for my future. I'm truly at a loss for words with the incredible responses. I never expected this to gain this much attention, but I guess it just goes to show how unpredictable life can be. For those wondering why it took so long to get a second opinion, I'd experienced a lot of untreated traumas that caused me to speak very little. When I did, I often just said what others wanted to hear. Story 5. My mom and I haven't really had any relationship for the past five years for a lot of reasons. A couple of huge parts of that being me having left the religion that I was raised in and her having severe bipolar disorder that made her nearly impossible to deal with, which she refused to maintain treatment for. We've only spoken once in the last five years, and it was awful. It was about a year and a half ago. I drove down to Cali to visit her, 450 miles from me, and tried to patch things up. It ended up in a huge blowout fight and generally went as poorly as it possibly could. We never spoke again. One morning in May of this year, my dad showed up at my door randomly. He and my mom had been divorced for many years and said we needed to talk. The apartment building my mom was living in had been set on fire and she didn't make it out. I still can't believe how hard it hit me. It changed me. Maybe forever. The worst part was about three weeks ago when I was trying to remember the password to an old PayPal account. I had to have it reset and it was sent to an old email address that I haven't used in years. When I logged in, I found an email from her, sent just shortly before she died, apologizing and trying to reconnect and make amends. We had been out of contact for so long it was the last email address she had for me, but since I haven't been using it for years, I didn't get her message until months after her death. Story 6 Bill made it a million by the time he was 18 in the mid-80s. He's been one of my closest and most influential friends for 25 years. However, when he married a girl I didn't like or trust 25 years ago, I made my reservations known, but he went ahead with it anyway. A few years ago, she ran off with a guy she met at a roller rink who apparently swept her off her feet with his skating skills, and Bill was back to being single. When Bill met a new girl and insisted I meet her, he remembered that I had not approved of his ex. We arranged to have lunch at one of those mediocre buffets, and I was struck by her beauty and her precise use of the English language. She was working on her PhD and came across as truly impressive. However, I couldn't help but notice some inconsistencies. It was evident that she had received a polished upbringing, so why did she have a nail polish in her cuticles and wear a dress straight out of a 1985 resale rack? Several details didn't quite align and Bill was on the verge of marrying her. I told Bill that I felt she might be hiding something, but that didn't matter. She exuded class and sophistication. I assured him she was an exceptional woman. The revelation about her family's immense wealth only came to light after Bill met her parents at their beach house in Destin during the wedding. As it turned out, my friend had never disclosed a substantial fortune to his new bride, but she had been concealing the fact that her parents were legit billionaires. Bill deserves someone like her. Marriage of bank accounts. It's a match made in Wall Street. Who doesn't love a good plot twist? If these stories kept you entertained, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more. Story 7. My wife was pregnant with her third and last planned child. We ended up in the ER because she was having a pregnancy loss. The nurse cried because the fetus couldn't develop normally, so there was nothing to be done. It was horrible. One of the first times I felt completely helpless as an adult. But it turns out the pregnancy loss was actually her body making room for twins. The girls are big now. We went from losing one to gaining two. Let me clear up some things. A couple of previous ultrasounds only showed a single baby. There was only a single heartbeat. The symptoms, horrible cramping, pressure, were her body preparing for twins. We didn't lose a baby. We were told we were losing it by doctors and had accepted that. In the end, we gained two, but not without another scare. The position of fetus B was in a dangerous location that would make overall development and C-section very dangerous. We were told for the second time that we'd more than likely lose a baby. My wife was put on bed rest and went on to carry the twins to full term. The unlikely twin is named Grace. Story 8. My grandfather left my grandmother for another man after 35 years of marriage. The raising of two kids, a daughter, my mom, and a slightly mentally challenged son. It messed my grandmother up pretty badly. Fast forward 16 years, my mom died from liver failure, my kid sister and I are young and broke, grandmother is old and broke, grandfather pays for everything, nobody says anything to him, no thanks, no condolences, nothing. I went to go see him and talk to him, thank him and see how he's doing. I asked my grandmother where he lived because he told me he had something important he needed to tell me, pulled out of my hat, obviously, but grandmother burst into tears and confesses that grandfather is not my mom's biological father. She had a whirlwind romance with some traveling individual who left her as soon as he could. Grandfather offered to marry grandmother and raise my mom as his own. Mom never knew. I was stunned. My grandmother was always really judgmental of other people and looked down on anyone else in this exact situation. She was sobbing at this point, and I snapped at her to stop because relations never really played all that heavily into what my sister and I considered family, that she shouldn't consider it either. Anyway, that's how I found out one of my family's biggest secrets accidentally and then promptly didn't give much thought about it. Story 9 I bought a pair of dress pants for a job interview at a thrift store, and guess what? I snagged them for a mere two dollars, and that's when things got interesting. I reached into the pocket and found a crisp hundred dollar bill tucked away. Talk about a pleasant surprise. It turned my day into a good one. By the way, I did land the job, even though it wasn't exactly my dream gig. Money is money, right? 
A similar stroke of luck graced my sister at a Goodwill store when she was just a child. She had her heart set on a purse she spotted there, even though we were tight on cash. Mom went ahead and bought it, despite her financial situation. That's when the real magic happened. As I reached into one of the pockets, my fingers brushed against another $100 bill. You can imagine the mental math I did on the way to the grocery store, calculating how many Beanie Babies I could buy, taxes included. But then I saw my mom counting her money and putting items back so I couldn't keep it to myself any longer. I spilled the beans about my discovery. It all went down 16 years ago at the Goodwill and Roxborough Road in Durham. At the time, our family was going through a rough patch due to my dad's back surgery and money was tight. While my Nana treated me to a Beanie Baby, my mom used the money to buy us groceries. It was a real lifesaver, and I can't help but wonder if there are kind souls out there who visit thrift stores and spread a little unexpected joy by leaving money in random items. Sort of like those folks who pay off others' layaways during the holiday season. Story 10. My brother was gay and somewhat promiscuous in San Francisco in the 1980s. For a long time, he just assumed he had a certain condition and it was just a matter of time. He avoided taking a particular test once they were developed, though, out of fear of finding out. In the mid-1990s, a boyfriend finally talked him into a specific test and discovered he was in the clear. It absolutely shook him. Obviously, he's glad he's okay, but after years of assuming he'd be facing a different fate, he had to do some serious reevaluating. He's married to that boyfriend now, by the way. A little history lesson for those of you about to judge my brother. If you were gay in San Francisco in 1980, all your friends suddenly started wasting away and dying, and no one knew why. No one knew what the particular condition was in the early 80s, let alone how to protect yourself from it, and before we knew it was a transmitted condition, having unprotected encounters was a totally normal thing. Not an unconscionably responsible act. It was a different time. Hey, it's simple math. Being positively sure you're negative beats staying negatively sure you're positive. Capiche? Story 11. I began dating a girl and our single parents hit it off big time. Then my girlfriend slept with my best friend, leading to a messy breakup. To make matters more complicated, my ex-girlfriend is now my stepsister. Life can throw some crazy curveballs. Oh, and let's not forget the cherry on top. They got married on the night of my senior ball. And just to clarify, no, we didn't engage in any hanky-panky afterward. So let's keep it clean, folks. It was a tough ordeal, but the support from both friends and strangers truly made it bearable. Story 12. I was interested in a woman at work, and she seemed to be reciprocating, playfully flirting with me. There were moments when she'd lock eyes with me and I couldn't help but be drawn to her. We shared a lot of laughter and inside jokes, and I really believed there was a spark between us. But then one day as we were chatting, she looked deep into my eyes and confessed to me that she was married. My heart sank as I assumed she was going to say it was to a man. To my surprise, she told me she was married to another woman. Story 13. I got transferred to a different division, and within a few months, my new supervisor and I were like oil and water. She was about as useful as a screen door in a submarine, and I didn't hold back when she messed things up. Things got pretty rocky, and she decided to play her hand by giving me a job she thought would send me packing. I packed up my belongings in a box and asked for a hand moving to my new desk. She brushed me off, claiming she had no one to spare. So there I was, carrying my box, completely unaware of a spill on the floor, which, ironically, happened right outside her office. I took a tumble and my knee took the brunt of it. Fast forward to today and I'm on permanent disability, which is all above board, mind you. I received a substantial settlement, lifelong health care, and even retired ahead of schedule. As for her, she got demoted and then got the boot, partly because of how she mishandled my situation. All of this went down a few years back, and then just the other day, while my husband and I were doing our grocery shopping, who should I spot in the store but her? I didn't exactly relish the encounter, but my husband decided to make his feelings known with a big, enthusiastic thumbs up. She looked pretty ticked off. Story 14 I shared the story before, but it's worth telling again. Back in high school, I was a little goth girl with a big secret crush on an upperclassman who was not only a wrestler, but also did cross-country. The cousin, on the other hand, was the epitome of Miss Socialite and had her own crush on him, which she shamelessly pursued. He and I were polar opposites. We shared the same bus, but I was pretty convinced I was invisible to him. Then one day, things took a turn. His friend started teasing me, and he got up from the front of the bus, made his way to where his buddies and I were sitting, planted himself next to me, threw his arm around me, and the teasing stopped. This didn't sit well with my cousin, as he and I became fast friends and he consistently rebuffed her advances. Fast forward a bit, and she concocted a scheme to have me expelled by falsely claiming I had an explosive and intended to wreak havoc. Her motivation? She didn't like that her boyfriend and I were such close friends. This false accusation shattered all of my friendships, except the one with my former crush. Now my boyfriend. He and I stayed friends even after he moved away, and her bond grew stronger when he returned. Now we've been together for nearly four years. We purchased a house and a car, had a daughter, and we're making plans for our next and likely permanent home. A decade later, my cousin is still greener than a Granny Smith apple. Well, Wednesday Adam sure has her charms. Story 15. The girl I took to homecoming and the one I attended prom with started dating a couple of months after our prom night. Fast forward 17 years and I made a peculiar discovery. For all that time, I had believed I had two birthmarks on my torso. That was until my then-girlfriend, out of curiosity, took a really close look at them. It turns out I have an extra set of nubs. They're quite tiny but fully formed, complete with areolas and everything. Someone informed me that this is actually quite common. During human development in the womb, we have milk lines from an early evolutionary stage and sometimes remnants are left behind, resulting in extra nubs. Story 16. 
I discovered I had a serious health condition just two days before moving into my new apartment and kicking off my final year of college. However, I later learned that the illness was quite manageable. It was the most unexpected turn of events in my life. Recently, I completed a round of treatment. The doctor shared some good news with me. It went well. The initial diagnosis was actually made by the pathologist, I believe, based on a biopsy sample. The term undifferentiated and their report raised some red flags. Fortunately, after consulting with a specialist who examined my samples before, during and after surgery, it turned out to be a more manageable type of cancer, though still challenging within that category. Story 17. The past year was like one never-ending plot twist. I started my first year of college, wanting to bond with my grandmother more after my grandfather passed away and then, out of the blue, she passed away from kidney failure. I attempted to cope by taking long walks with my dog when, lo and behold, my dog succumbed to leg carcinoma. I tried to stay focused on my studies and future, aiming for good midterms in March. And then, shocker, my dad suddenly passed away due to surgery complications. I urged myself to stay strong and continue into my second year of college. My dad's lifelong best friend even promised to teach me how to grill like my old man used to. And wouldn't you know it, he ended up keeling over from a heart attack. Life's got quite the sense of humor, I tell you. If I was close to this guy and the god of death came knocking on my door, I'd say, Not today, bro. I haven't finished open season in Fallout 4 yet. Congrats on making it to the end. If you're a fan of funny surprises, you'll surely love What's the Biggest WTF Just Happened Moment? Story 3 flipped me out. See you there.